This time on Distant Shores, we're going through the Panama Canal from the Pacific to the Atlantic. We're Paul and Cheryl Shard, and we've been exploring the world by sailboat and filming it for television for more than 30 years. Prepare for this, our second transit of the Panama Canal at La Playita Marina in Panama City. The bottom has to be cleaned, inspections and paperwork to be done, and then we're ready for our transit, starting at 3 a.m. It's early morning, two o'clock comes early. Cheryl's just popping up to let our line handlers and our canal agent in. Roy is up at the ramp. We get ready to get going. We're going through the canal again, back to the Caribbean, just getting ourselves sorted out. We've got line handlers have arrived here already, along with our fenders, and we'll get everything set up. Morning, Roy. How are you today? Oh, very good. Happy New Year, my friend. Happy New Year. <laughs> Fiesta <laughs> Ana Nuevo. That's right. Morning. morning. Good morning. This is Omar. Hi, Omar. Omar. Good to pleased to meet you, Omar. Gabi. 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 And Amari. Oh, look at all those lines. Amari. We about ready to go here. Nearly ready, just setting the lines up so we start to move out. We're having a bit of bow thruster trouble. Okay. Okay, all good. Perfect. Yes, see? It's free. It's free. Bow. Bow clear. We've been assigned a time of four in the morning to meet our Panama Canal advisor. This service boat meets us right near the marina and will drop the advisor off, and they will stay aboard for the entire transit. Hey, it looks like we have a lady advisor. It's three miles to the Bridge of the Americas, then another four miles on to the first lock. We've got over an hour. Coming up behind us is the poetically named FPMC 36 of Monrovia, our buddy for the day on our journey through to the Caribbean. Yachts never go through alone, but share the lock with a small ship and perhaps a tugboat or other yachts. Our official Panama Canal advisor tells us we will be in with a tugboat and this 700 foot long ship. When the canal was built, it divided the continents by providing a water route through what had been land, so a bridge was needed. Small bridges crossed the canal at the locks, but these had to close when ship traffic transited the canal. Otherwise, ferries were the only option. Finally, in 1962, this permanent bridge would provide an uninterrupted link for traffic. Balboa is the Pacific side port of the Panama Canal. It's one of the busiest ports in Latin America. Ramari 1 is our tugboat. So the ship will go into the lock first, and then the Ramari will go into the lock, and then we will tie up to the side of the Ramari tugboat. And then we have to stay with them all through the whole day, so through the first three locks up, and then across the lake, we have to not get too far behind. <laughs> and then we go down the Gatun locks also with them, because there's no other ship today. There's no other ship that's the right size to have us in the lock chamber. There you go. Because uh, we're only going on the one side. All right. We can, and we can see you on the other side just in case. 
So what was that document? So we changed our request form so we can sign that we're allowed to go in with a tugboat because I requested that we don't not tie up to a tug. Right. So we'll give that one a try, see how it works. Okay. The ship will go into the front of the lock, then the tug will come in and the tug ties up to the wall. And then we raft up to the tug with two lines, just balanced. Yeah, to, uh, right. Your light handlers have experience. Yes. Uh, that's a good choice huh? for your safe and for us also. Yeah. To make it a good maneuvering and a, a good operation also inside. They will set the ropes. The most important is the, the one on the, the aft. They must secure that one quickly so they, we can get stopped. When you apply to transit the canal, you can choose tie-up options you feel are safe for your boat to go through the locks. Slowly, let's go to the arrow. Options are tied to the center with other boats, rafted up to another vessel such as a tugboat, or alongside the lock wall. I had specified I wanted to be center chamber only, but that turns out to not be an option today. We have to tie up to the tug or wait another day for a chance to do center chamber. The option I feel is most dangerous is tying up to the lock wall, since turbulence in the lock as it fills up with water would bash us around and into the wall. Check out our videos on crossing France by canals to see the lengths we had to go to to protect our boat from this method. The main problem I foresee with tying to the tugboat is that we have to untie and maneuver in the tight space at the top of each lock and motor on to the next chamber. So there's quite a bit of close quarters work in the chambers dealing with turbulence, crosswinds and the tugboat nearby. Well goodbye Pacific Ocean. It was a very short visit but I'm sure we'll be back. At the top of the lock the ship puts her engine in gear very slowly to reduce turbulence for us behind her but we still have to wait a few minutes for the swirling water to subside or we might be thrown against the rough lock walls. The tug is using her engine in gear to try to maintain her position in the current. Now we untie and have only a few feet on either side to maneuver while we wait for the tug to move forward into the next chamber. You have to maneuver in here the whole time making room for the tug to pull out. So the guys are protecting both sides of the boat in case we're thrown toward the wall. The tug has to go first since she needs to tie up again. Then we come alongside. so he wanted to undo our stern cleat so he could take up slack as the boat went up. Ah, I see. But we can't see what he's putting onto on the other side, uh, so we're not really trusting that he has another cleat there. Right. Whereas we were on a bollard before, and now we're on something we can't see behind this. Right, right. 
Now we get to motor through the tiny little lake, Pedro Miguel, I think it's called Pedro Miguel Lake, or Miraflores Lake. And then we get to go into the third lock of the morning, and then after that we have a whole four, four and a half hours of motoring through Yatun Lake, and we can have breakfast then. Okay. Watch the sun come up. Right so close to the ship, the tug is right underneath the ship. When they put the ship in gear, the propellers will start when he tries to leave. And we're only like 20 feet away from the stern, 30 feet away from the stern. Too exciting. Yeah, a little bit scary. On our way. Excellent. Perfect. It's the best. <laughs> yes. It's 31 miles onto the next lock, and we've got to keep up with our lock buddies to complete the transit in one day. So we will need to maintain a minimum speed of seven knots. You're not allowed to sail. The first three locks this morning have raised us 85 feet up from the Pacific Ocean to the level of Lake Gatun. Now we have to cross this lake before descending the final three locks to the Caribbean. Motoring along through the lake and all of a sudden something fell out of the sky and landed on Christie's bag and it's a bat. So what's happening Paul? Last second change we've added another fishing boat that's side tying to the other boat so our space is kind of gone. So we'll go side to the wall on the port side. I have enough personnel. Okay. There's not enough enough personnel for well, center chamber. You will need four. Yes, on both sides. So that's why. If we don't try this today, you will stay here one night or two. It depends. Kirsty tells us a fishing boat is being added into our lock group at the last yes. minute, yes. and they will be taking our place rafted up to the tugboat. This means we have to tie directly to the wall. The ship is coming in behind us today because we're going down now. I didn't want to raft the wall on the way up because of the turbulence, but now we're going down, there isn't any turbulence, and it should be okay. But we will still need to have all our fenders out. Yes, better. This one, Paul. Okay, this is a bit on the thrilling side. 
They've added an extra fishing boat in here. There's a breeze, our thrusters out, and we have to maneuver in the chamber while they tie up, and then we're going to be tied on the side wall instead of being suspended in the middle. I think all because of the COVID, so they don't have enough people to work to walk the four lines. Hey, Mike, don't me, Mike. Ready with fenders on the bow? Yes, we have there. We have. Okay. Great. Beautiful, everybody. Yay, team! So the guys on the fishing boat are having a little more trouble rafting up than we did. against a top boat or another commercial ship or a port, uh, neither side boat. You can be, sign for that. And because the plan has changed, then we have to sign that we agree. I spoke with the captain, he agreed and then... Or else we would have to stay back there for another day or two until we have another chance. Exactly. Right. But I think the problem is the canal has run out of people who could do the line handling. Because of the pandemic, they have not got so many people. Then on the last lock, we have a problem. As the door opens, a fresh breeze is blowing in from the Caribbean, and it catches our bow when the line handler ashore casts off our stern line too soon. Before I know it, our bow has blown down, and without our thruster, I can't get it back in this confined space. A single-engine boat will always pull to one side in reverse, depending on whether they have a right or left-handed propeller, and you can use this to turn in tight quarters. Since the wind is also pushing the bow, I can spin the boat using the prop walk which pulls us to port, right under the bow of the ship, and just back out of the lock into the Caribbean Sea. If you just run this in reverse, everything's going to look perfect. <laughs> We're bowing to them. We're not going all the way to Shelter Bay. Oh, no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm really happy, yeah. Thank you, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. It's been a crazy fun day. Once out in Lamont Bay, the pilot boat comes to pick up Kirsty. These transfers always look a bit precarious. But the Canal Authority captains are so precise as they come back a second time for her things. we head on to Shelter Bay. We're soon docked at the marina there. We've made our second transit of the Panama Canal without a scratch. If you're dreaming of sailing the world, you may find yourself in Panama too one day. So we hope you found this video informative. Check out our original three-part series on how to transit the Panama Canal for even more details. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more, click on subscribe and hit that notification bell too, so you don't miss new episodes. Thanks for your support. We value your comments and shares. And special thanks to members of the Distant Shores Cruising Club on Patreon, who make these videos possible. Cruising Club members enjoy early viewing, give input on video topics, get direct answers to their cruising questions, and participate in member-only live chats, Q&As, and other events. We hope you'll join us too. See you next time.